everybody. We are ready to go. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Welcome back to another at-home training session with Union Thunder. Today we're going to be doing all stick handling. We have seven stick handling drills lined up for you. We're going to give you three minutes of practice time for each drill. Uh, for today's class, you will need your stick, your gloves, extra pucks. Four of them would be great if you have them, and a stick handling ball. I would recommend using either a golf ball or a Swedish stick handling ball if you have one. I also recommend wearing sneakers for this workout as we will be doing some balancing on one foot and we'll be doing a little bit of hopping in one of the exercises. So sneakers will be recommended for that. There you go. All right. So without anything else, I think we're ready to get started. So grab your stick, grab your gloves, and we'll get going with drill number one here. Matt. If you guys have any questions during the class, make sure you put those up in the chat section and then I will try to answer them as we go. Make sure they're relevant for what we're doing now. Also, if you have any other recommendations for future stick handling drills or other exercises that you'd like to learn or work on, you can also put those in the chat box so that we can take a look at them and use them for later classes. All right, we're gonna get started. Make sure you have all your stuff ready to go. The first drill we're gonna do, you don't need any extra items. We are going to be balancing on one foot while working around from our forehand side to the middle, and then over to the backhand side. And middle, forehand, working around those three positions with quick touches, all while balancing on our left foot. Right foot's in the air, and we want to keep that right foot in the air for the full three minutes. The other thing we'd like to practice, because we're going to use this for a lot of our different drills today, is keeping our hands out, extended from our body as far as possible. So, as you work your way around, if you have the space where you're working right now, try to reach your hands off your body while balancing on one foot, pull to the middle, and then same thing on the back hand. Reach across your body. Make sure you feel your shoulders stretching a little bit as you go. Try to keep the handles going for the full three minutes so you're getting some good work on that top wrist. And try to keep the balance for the full three minutes. Struggle through that. Okay? We're going to get going. Make sure we have a good view of you on your camera so that we can go through and start spotlighting people. And I can help make some corrections as we go. All right? We're going to get started with our three minutes in five, four, three, two, one. Remember to keep those hands out from your body as much as you can. All right, Ben. Let's see it, Ben. Muddy Duck shirt. Let's go. Very good. Yep. Now, Ben, since you're on your right foot right now, just when we switch over, keep going. But when we switch over, you're going to go to your left foot on the next one. Okay? Keep going on your right foot. That's fine. Totally fine if you're on your right foot right now. Just remember when we do the next three minutes, you're gonna be switching over to your left foot. All right, Timos, nice job. Keep struggling through that balance part and work to stretch your hands off your body as much as you can. Nice balance on one foot there, Max. Good job. Remember, when we do the stick handling all the way around, the three points we want to focus on are all the way out to the side of our forehand side. Good. And then back to the middle. So that's right in front of you, going east to west. And then we want to get all the way around on the backhand side without turning the foot too much and go north to south on that side of your body. If you remember from our around the world stick handling, this is the type of thing Yep, where we're going north to south on the sides and east to west in the middle. Jack's using rollerblades. Jack, I'm going to try to get you up on the uh, screen here and see how you're doing. Keep going, guys. We're going to go for a full three minutes of each one. So you're going to 
really start to feel your top hand get a little bit tired, you still have one minute left on this cycle. Oh no. Jack, I hope you're not on your rollerblades inside the house. That is crazy. Don't break anything. All right, keep going everybody. 30 seconds left. Palmer, let's check in how you're doing. Very good. Again, try to stretch your hands out off your body. I'm gonna demonstrate this again for you guys before we get going on the second round of drills here. You got 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left here. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now the next one we're going to do is the same thing, but we're just going to switch over to the other foot. But before we get started there, I want to talk about boxing our hands out. What we want to practice in these drills is getting our hands out as far away from our body as we can. So you should feel a little bit of stretching in your shoulders and get a nice straight elbow here for as much of the drill as possible. It may feel a little bit weird, but the idea is that we want to get outside of our comfort zone, right? And get a little more comfortable stick handling in a place away from our body that's very uncomfortable for us, right? That's how you get better. You gotta work outside your comfort zone a little bit. So make sure you're stretching your hands out as much as you can. You should be on our other foot now. So for most of you guys, it's gonna be your right foot. And remember, as you move over to your forehand side, try to stretch your hands out off your body. It should feel a little bit exaggerated, okay? And then the same thing when you come over to your backhand side, you should feel a little bit exaggerated. You should feel some twisting in your torso and some stretching in your shoulder blades. All right, we're gonna get going on our second drill here. It's the same one, front stick handling, forehand stick handling, and backhand stick handling all on one foot. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go ahead. We want to go east to west on the front stick handle, and we want to go north to south on the side stick handle. We don't want to see too much bad stick handling here. Remember, really focus on twisting with the top hand and lifting with the bottom hand. You shouldn't be doing too much twisting with this bottom hand, right? Keep it going here for the full three minutes. Be 30 seconds in right now. Corbett, you're up, buddy. Let's see it. Oh no. There you go. Work it all the way around those three points around your body. Good. Uh, in a previous session, we did compass stick handling where we had a northern point, an eastern point, a western point, and a southern point. Here you're just working that east, north, and west points around your body, imagining that your body is at the center of a compass. Good job, Corbett. Corbett, you might want to think about a haircut pretty soon. I couldn't see your eyes there. Good job, Edward. Good, our hands should be getting a lot faster. For those of you who've been showing up for six weeks now, yeah, I'm seeing some very speedy hands, which is awesome. And a lot of that's gonna come from really focusing on using the top hand as much as you can to do these stick handling drills. Good, Torx. Check in on Kieran. Good job, Kieran. Yep, work it around. Those three points around your body, really focus on stick handling in each of those points. Good balance, good moving your hands faster on your body. Stretch your hands, box them out. Get those shoulder blades stretching a little bit with an exaggerated reach. Yeah, outside your comfort zone. Very good. Nice job, Kieran. <laughs> Good job, Wallen. Good hands. Yep. Twist it all the way. Exaggerate that twist to the backhand side. Make sure you're getting outside your comfort zone on the backhand side, too. Good job. 30 seconds left. Thomas, we're coming over to you. Let's see how you're doing. Nice job, buddy. You just get out of the pool. <laughs> I'm going to require shirts. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, we didn't put that in uh, required <laughs> equipment today, so it's all right. All right, 10 seconds left. Keep going, Sammy. Good job, man. And we are done. Nice job. Take a rest. Shake those wrists out if your wrists are getting a little bit tired. That's a good thing. The reason that we're doing less drills but for a longer time today is to really push ourselves to see how long we can keep that wrist stick handling, okay? All right, next one. Ooh, this is a tough one. We're going to be doing a little bit of a hop here. We're going to be doing what's called a skater hop. Uh, many of you may already know this. We're going to be lined up on one side on one foot, and then we're going to jump across, landing on the foot on the other side. But we're going to add in some stick handling as we go for the three minutes. So we'll be stick handling on one side, ready, loaded up, knee bent for our skater hop, skater hop across, try to hold your balance if you can, and then start stick handling right away. Not an easy one, it's a really good test of your balance. Let's try to keep it going for the full three minutes here. We're gonna start in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. Let's see who we got here. All right, Timos, that looks pretty good. We're gonna get you guys up there. Good. Good. Try to struggle through it and see how many skater hops in a row you can get while stick handling without letting that extra foot drop. And then once you've gotten to a point where you're really getting good at it, then what you're going to want to do is challenge yourself to jump even farther each time. Good. This is not an easy one, right? You can make it easy by being a little bit lazy, but it looks like a lot of you guys are really pushing yourself to struggle through the balance aspect of this one. Good. Nice, Karen. That looks very good. Nice job. Good. And just keep pushing yourself to jump farther and farther with each one and try to keep the handles going the whole time. Good. Now, Joe, what you can do, Torts, what you can do, since you have a little bit longer run here in your garage, you could almost do this while moving forward towards the camera and try to make it almost like a diagonal jump as you go. And then you could jump backwards, too, to make it harder once you get all the way up here. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Almost get a little more edge work in there, right? That's good. And everybody's going to have a little bit of a different space to work with. Um, you know, use what you got to try to be a little bit creative and make, uh, make new challenges for yourself. There you go, Gowan. Let's see it. Good job. Oh, man. That's a big jump. All right, we got one minute left. Keep going. You're probably getting a little tired from all these jumps back and forth. That's okay. Keep working. This is a good one. Like if you feel like you have a lot of energy one day and you want to practice some stick handling and, and feel like you're really doing something that's going to help you with your hockey skills and, and building and getting better from home, this is a good one. Along with the side to side hops that we do over the stick while stick handling. Combine these two drills for a good workout. 30 seconds left. Keep it going. Let's see. Jake Stefanak, let's see what you got, buddy. Woo, let's go. Oh, you guys probably have some pretty fun uh, mini hockey games over in that. Uh, we got a nice basement there. Good mini hockey rink. Five seconds left. All right. Three, two, one, and rest. Nice job on that one, guys. All right, for the next one here, you're gonna need four pucks. And what you're gonna do, and this all kind of depends on the amount of space you have, but you're gonna create a box. And you want this box to be a pretty good size. I'm gonna tell you how to determine how big your box should be, all right? 
and it may be limited by how much space you have or not. But what we want to do is stand in the middle of our box, right in the center. And then we want to make sure that the pucks or cones or whatever you have at the edge of your box are just a little bit farther than stick length away from you. So I don't have a ton of space here, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit, it's gonna be easy for me. But if you can, you wanna make sure that if you're stretching your hands all the way out off your body as far as you can, that puck is gonna be just short of where your stick can reach, right? So that when you have to take the ball and go around that puck, you're gonna be just barely able to reach it. It's gonna be from standing still, stationary in the middle of the box, it's gonna really feel like a big stretch as you come around the outside of each puck. Okay, so, and these pucks should be equal. So you're gonna have one here up to your uh, front left corner. You're gonna have one here in the back left corner, front right corner, and back right corner here. So there's gonna be some twisting too as you're reaching around. What we wanna do for three minutes is we're gonna work on stick handling on the outside of this box. And we're gonna use these four points as our key spots for our quick handle. So we'll do little soft touches here with our hands stretched out off our body on the outside of this puck here. Then we'll move back and do it here back behind us. We'll come back up, right here again, come over across, stick handles here outside of our puck, and then really all the way back here. And notice how I try not to move my feet at all. I'm twisting my upper body all the way around and stick handling just outside of this puck. Work our way around that pattern. Okay, so again, the box should be pretty much as big as you possibly can make it in your space, but just short enough that you can reach your stick blade around it with a really good challenging reach of your arms. Okay, let's get going for three minutes here, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. Just three minutes, Mason, not five. All right, let's see it. All right, Daphne, you have a good setup there. That's pretty good. Let's see, let's check in on Daphne. Good. All right, and we really want to work on keeping our feet firmly planted, stationary in the middle of this box so that we're forcing ourselves to stretch our reach around the pucks at the four points of the square, the four corners of the square. Good. Griffin's doing a good job keeping his feet firmly planted in the middle, forcing himself to twist all the way around the outside of the box. That's what we want to see. And if you have to go a little slower at first, that's totally fine, right? The biggest thing here is that we're feeling that stretch in our shoulders. Now, for those of you who've been doing this for six weeks, you know that when the puck is or ball is far away from your body, you're going to be taking your hands and starting to slide them closer together to help with that reach. So right here, we should see our hands being a little closer together than a normal grip, a normal stick handling or passing or shooting grip. Yep, Joe Tortorello, that's very good. Want to make sure it's a challenge. And again, it might be tough depending on the space you're in, but what you can think about is how can I adjust this drill when I'm working on it on my own so that I can practice different points around this square. So if my space isn't very big, I may just work on two parts of the square at once and then spend more time working on the other two parts by adjusting my body. You got 45 seconds left here. Keep it going, guys. Good. Michael Marshall, nice job, buddy. Keep it up. You got 20 seconds left on this one. 
Keep those hands moving. Here, nice job. It looks like you got it set up with a nice big long reach there. It's good. And five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Very good, guys. Okay, so you can push those four pucks to the side for now. All right. Now, this one we've done a few times before, but it's a good one because it's going to lead into the one we're going to do next, which is a little bit of a new one. We're going to be stick handling here on our forehand side. Again, exaggerating that boxed out position, having our hands out from our body as much as possible. We're going to stick handle on the forehand side, push handles right outside your foot. So if you're lefty, right outside your left foot here. And then you're going to snap that ball forward kind of sliding your hands a little closer together to get a full extension of the reach going forward. Then you're going to pull back to the side here. And then again, full extension back here, kind of twisting your upper body, keeping your eyes forward and your feet planted. Okay. So stick handle here, side of the body, snap forward, stick handle on the side, snap back. Okay. Things to be practicing here to make it a little harder for you, vision, right? knees bent. If you want to give yourself a real challenge like older guys, take those four pucks you just had, stack them underneath your feet, okay? One on top of another, and you can stand on those pucks as you do this drill for a little more of a balance challenge here, okay? Give you a couple seconds to stack those pucks if that's what you want to do. And then again, we're stick handling here, hands out. Extend it from your body. Good exaggeration on that. Twisting the top hand, or cupping of the puck, snap forward, snap back. Okay? We're going to do three minutes of that, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. All right, good. Hey, Palmer standing on the pucks there. Very good. All right, make sure, yep, stick handle, quick handles on the side, and then snap all the way forward, and snap all the way back. Nice job. All right, let's check in on Corbett, see how he's doing. Whoa, Corbett, that's a lot of pucks to stand on. I like it. That's a, what do you got, a three stack there on each one? Oh, no. I like the I like the effort though. It's good to challenge yourself, man. Kudo, let's check on the kudos. All right, what's up, kudo? There you go. Snap it back, right? Good stick handle on the side, and then snap it back. Try to keep your feet um, just steady, still, stationary in one spot. We don't want to move our feet too much. Right? It's really more about feeling yourself stretch in the shoulders. Work the wrists, twist at the torso, kind of feel it in your core a little bit more. By feel it in your core a little bit more by keeping your feet stationary. All right, there you go, Marsh. Hey, Marsh, make sure you are sliding the hand when you come forward. Bring them almost all the way together. Yep, work on that bottom hand slide. And get somewhere you're working on bringing it back too, right? Snapping back. Because actually that snap to the position back behind your body is going to be the one we're using on the next one. We've got a little over one minute left here, guys. There you go. Gowan, nice job. Good balance on the pucks there. Way to struggle through it. I've seen some of you guys also have those, um, I think they're called rev balance boards. They're kind of like a skateboard or a surfboard that you stand on and then there's a, a cylinder underneath them. Um, you know, that's a very similar to standing on the pucks. It's a good challenge with the balance. You can do this kind of, this is one of those drills that you could do on that balance board. Yeah, he's got one right there, perfect. If you look at the screen right now, uh, Liam has one of these boards as well. I'm sure some of you guys have picked these up. They are hitting it hard with the advertisements all over the internet. So I've seen, seen them in quite a few places. You got 15 seconds left. 
So you can get up on that board. There you go, Liam. So you can get on the board and do this drill. It's a hard one. There you go, with the hand slide too, very nice. All right, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Very good, guys. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna use that one to kind of build into the next one here, all right? It's a fun one. Um, you know, there's a few players that I know from some of our teams who like to use this one in games a lot. So, we're gonna be stick handling here in the middle of the body. We're going to move it back to that side handle, triple threat position. Then you're going to snap it back, almost making it look like you're ready to shoot. And then from that position, you're going to slide the ball through or pop through your leg. So you can do that either by lifting up the heel and kind of towing it through your legs like this. Back to the middle of the star again. Got front handle, side handle, triple threat. Snap back to shooting position. And the other variation is that you can push your hands out from your body, like you've been working on, put your back hand over the ball, and slide it through your legs like that. Okay? So, either way, right, you have two choices from back there, but it's the same thing to set it up. You're going to stick handle in the middle, you're going to move it over to your forehand, you're going to snap into a shooting or even passing position, and then you're going to pull that ball up through the middle and start again for another round. Okay, we're going to work on that for three minutes here. We'll roll around to some different screens, see how everybody's doing. We're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. So we had some questions here. Yeah, I just said, so you can, uh, Luca, you can do that on your backhand if you want to work on twisting around to your backhand side and pulling it one hand backhand through your legs. That's another variation of this. Or from your forehand shooting side, you can use either a forehand toe drag or you can lift your hands up, get your backhand over the ball, and then pull it through your legs on the backhand side. Yep. And then right through the legs, Anthony. Very good. Anthony just did it with a forehand toe drag there. The other option there, Anthony, from that spot would be to kind of put your backhand, push your hands out from your body, put your backhand over the ball and try sliding it through your legs with a little backhand tap. Almost. Let's check in on Griffin. Good. Griffin's a lefty, so you can work the other side of his body. Come all the way around. Ooh, nice job, right? Good job keeping your feet very stationary, Griffin. Good twist of the core. Nice job. Very good, Joe. Joe, I think you know exactly who I'm talking about when I say I, we have some players in the club who like to use this move. His name's Hubert. He scored a few goals on this one this year. Through the legs, pull it over the backhand, backhand shelf shot. I've seen Wallen do this one before in games and practice. He likes to get a little fancy with the stick handling sometimes. You got a minute left here. Good job, Marsh. See those Timos? Oh, we lost one Timo. Good though. Nice job, Drew. All right, goalie, let's see it. Nice job, man. Now just imagine doing that with your goalie gloves on and with a goalie stick. We'll work on that in practice when we get back on the ice. 30 seconds left. Here you go, Jordy. Keep it working, buddy. Keep those hands going. And you got 10 seconds left here. Finish it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now, for our final drill today, we're going to need our four pucks again. Now, the other option you have is if you have maybe some smaller sticks, like if you have some mini sticks laying around or anything that's like a, 
you know, like I have this little baseball bat here for my kid, right? You can use this. Something about this size is good. What you're going to do is you're going to set up a T pattern for yourself. So for this T pattern, you can use pups to kind of show the ends of the T, of the end of the straight lines here, okay? So I have a straight line right here, and I got a straight line right here. Just that a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a figure eight pattern with my stick handling around this T pattern. So give me a little bit of reaching as I come around and make a circle around the top part here. Then I'm going to come through, pull in close to my feet, and then back around. So I'm going to move in what's a figure eight pattern, but it's around these two straight lines. Again, you could use two pucks here and a puck here and here to make two little straight lines for yourself. Work your way around that pattern. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like with the other pucks. Or you could use two smaller sticks or any other object you want to get creative with, but it should look somewhat like this. Okay? Actually, it looks more like a Y pattern. Okay? So, again, I'm coming around this top line here that I'm creating with these two pucks, and then I'm coming in through here. So, we got some hand sliding. My hands are kind of far apart, uh, or as, as the ball is far away from my body, my hands are coming close together around the top part of the T. And then as I toe drag back in here, I'm sliding my hands apart and then coming back. Around, okay? So, again, T pattern figure eight. All right? Get going on that for the last three minutes here. Make sure you keep your hands working the whole time. Five. Four, three, two, one. Let's go. Good. Corbett's got a good setup there. He's got a stick and a couple pucks. That works. Colvins, let's see how you're doing. Good. Jack, it looks like you got a good setup here. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so what, so Jack, we don't want to make a figure eight, right? I mean, this, you could do this, but you don't want to do, a, yeah, you want to make it come around them, pretend like there's a straight line between each part. Yeah. It's a little harder, actually. Good. Good, good setup there, Griffin. Nice. There you go. Pull through, and yep, you want to work on that hand slide right now. So hands are going to be tight together as you come around the farther part of the tee there, and then you're going to end up sliding in close to feet. It's not easy. Keep it going. There you go. And Joe's got two baseball bats set up, so that way you can kind of see how it works with two straight lines like that. There you go. Very good. So as you come around the farther one there, yeah, the top part of the T, your hands are going to be close together. And then as you come in close to your feet, you're going to be sliding your hands a little farther apart. So this is a good one to work on both the hand slide, which is something we've been working on quite a bit, in addition to stretching those hands off your body, which is kind of the theme for today's class. Really working on uh, stretching in your shoulder blades and getting comfortable with a ball or a puck farther out from your feet. You got one minute left. So keep going, try to get at a good pace here and just keep rolling right through. Very good. Nice job, Marsh. All right, just a reminder to anybody who has not done it already, right? We should have repeated uh, Coach Spencer's strength workout from this Monday. Now, I know many of you guys are on your own plans. You're working on your own strength and conditioning. But if you're not, especially if you're one of those younger guys who maybe isn't working on one of those things, you should have done Spencer's uh, strength workout again today. And then tomorrow, you should be doing the conditioning workout, uh, the AMRAP challenge that we had from this Tuesday, and trying to beat your score. And then we'll get together for our stick handling session at 2 o'clock. You got, you got 10 seconds left here. If you're looking for that AMRAP challenge, it's up on our club Instagram at Union Thunder Youth Hockey. 
and you can comment uh, below in those to let us know if you were able to beat your AMRAP challenge score. All right, three, two, one, and we're done. Nice job, everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys, Thank you. all again Thank today. You. Thank you, guys, Thank again. You coach it's getting better with Thank you, Coach. 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 Thank you,